สวัสดีค่ะ Welcome to Hot Thai Kitchen. Today's recipe is inspired by St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up really soon. And one of the things that people do to celebrate is to color everything green. And so today I've got a green recipe for you. It's a Thai street dessert, and it's sort of like Our version of dessert fondue. So we dip warm cubes of fluffy bread into this rich coconut pandan custard. Ah, uh, it is so good. It's called kanom pang sangkaya. Kanom pang is bread, and sangkaya is the name of this custard. Super easy too. So let's get started. The ingredient that makes this custard green is pandan leaves, or what we call b a i t e So this is pandan leaves in its entirety. I've used pandan leaves before, but I don't think I've ever shown you one that's full length. You can get this at some Asian markets. They're not easy to find, but a lot of times you can find them in the frozen section, and they'll be sort of cut up, so you know it won't be this long. But it's got this beautiful, calming floral aroma that works so well with. Coconut, and in fact, here's a fun fact: taxi drivers in Thailand put a bunch of this in the back of their taxis as an air freshener. It smells that good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is blend this up with our coconut milk to create green coconut milk. So I just use scissors. So now I'm gonna put this into my blender. To this, I'm gonna add my coconut milk. Yeah, I'll just put all of it in. Mmm. Ooh, that smells good. I'm going to strain this. You don't want any bits of fiber in there at all, otherwise you can actually feel it. So you want to use cheesecloth, muslin, or I happen to have this convenient little soup bag that I'm going to use. So I'm going to pour it right in here, and now you just let it come through. And as you can see, when it slows down, you just want to squeeze it, help it come out a little bit. Ooh, yeah, nice. By the way, if you don't have a muslin, any fabric store will sell you muslin for really cheap. And I just prefer muslin to cheesecloth because I only need one layer. With cheesecloth, you need a few, and then you can't really reuse cheesecloth. But with muslin, you just throw it in the wash, and you can reuse it over and over and over again. And then to this, I'm gonna add my condensed milk. Not every recipe uses condensed milk, but I love condensed milk with bread. So adding that milky richness to this just takes it a step further. Okay, so I'm just gonna let this heat up on the stove for just a few minutes until it's hot. While the coconut milk is heating up, I'm gonna mix up the rest of the custard. So I've got some granulated sugar here. Now you might be wondering why I'm not using palm sugar because I always use palm sugar in dessert. But for this, I actually want the flavor of the coconut. The milk and the pandan to come through, and I find when I do use palm sugar, it starts competing a little bit. So I want to keep the sweetness clean. Some cornstarch right here, and I like to mix cornstarch in with the sugar first, so that I can stir, and it helps get rid of any lumps. A little bit of salt always. This is when I really wish I had remembered to bring my mini whisk. So now I'm going to add some egg yolks. Oh. By the way, if that happens, like you crack the egg and your yolk fell, falls out, you can just use your hand and grab the yolk out. In fact, separating yolk this way is a safer way to do it because the chances of you puncturing the yolk with the shell is essentially none. So if I've got lots of yolk to separate, I just crack them all into a bowl and grab them out with my hands. So for those of you who are bakers out there, this is essentially a pastry cream that we're making. The same method. We're just using coconut milk and pandan and condensed milk instead of your typical milk or cream. It's nice and hot. So I'm going to pour this hot liquid into the eggs. Now we don't want to pour it all in because you're going to scramble the eggs. So what we do is called tempering. A drop of the hot liquid, and if I had a third hand, I'd be holding my bowl steady, <laughs> or put something under it like this. <laughs> all right. So a little bit. Give it a stir. Once it starts getting liquidy, you can be a little faster with the pouring. You don't have to worry about it too much. There you go. All right, it's looking like St. Patty's Day already. So this is the custard, and now I'm going to pour it back into this pot because we need to now cook it on the stove until it's thickened. What you don't, what you don't want to do is scramble the eggs. So at this point, you want to be stirring obsessively. Use a rubber spatula and make sure you scrape. I'm actually showing you a shortcut method because the other method is to cook this over a water bath. So you put the pot 
in a bigger pot of boiling water and that way you never really scramble your eggs but it takes forever and you're sort of the slave to the stove for I don't know half an hour and I just don't have patience for that so you can cook it stovetop you just have to be really careful make sure you scrape and you don't get the heat too high and this is also the reason why I heated up my coconut milk first. If I start this cold, then I'm gonna be here for much longer trying to bring it up to temperature. And a really, really important thing is you wanna make sure you use a heavy bottom pot. If your pot is thin, you're gonna get lots of hot spots and that's how you're gonna burn the custards. The one I have is not the best thing, but I'm compensating by obsessively stirring <laughs> and keeping the heat really, really, really low. All right, what you're looking for is for it to be thick. And how do you know that it's reached its maximum power? Basically, if it stops getting any thicker, <laughs> that's how you know. So it's gonna start to thicken and it'll keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And you're just waiting to see where it's quite thick to the point where you push it aside and you can actually see the bottom of the pot so it's slow to flow back and it just doesn't get any thicker. And that's how you know. So this is actually going to thicken as it cools and it is thicker than I want it to be because I'm not done. I'm going to add some evaporated milk and add some milkiness to it. Now how much I add just sort of depends on what kind of a texture you want it to be. Some people like to make it thick and make it into a spread, which you can do. Some people like to make it thin so that they can dip it like a fondue. So that's completely up to you. So I added four tablespoons of evaporated milk and what I'm looking for, if I pour it off, it runs into a stream. So it, instead of just going bleh, <laughs> into gloopy bits, um, it just runs a little freely and it will thicken just a little. And now I'm gonna strain it just in case there's little lumps here and there. And this way you can really scrape the sides because the sides can be a little lumpy. Push it through, oh yeah. I have got a pile of cubes of fluffy brioche, but you can use any white fluffy soft bread that you have, sandwich bread, as long as it's fluffy, will work just as well. Now in Thailand, they would steam it to make it nice and warm and soft, but I am just going to microwave it just for a few seconds to get it warm. Oh yes, fluffy. Mmm. Pour our custard in here. Oh yeah. Bread on the side. And this makes a great party dessert because people can participate in the dipping. And a lot of times what people do is they drizzle a little bit of evaporated milk on top. Mmm. Oh, smells so good. Mmm. 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 Oh. It's got that comforting feeling of a warm dessert and it's soft and fluffy. The custard, it's sweet, super aromatic, smooth and luscious. When I lived in Thailand, we used to get this as sort of a late night snack because they'd sell it next to the noodle stall. I don't know, a lot of times the, they will sell this next to noodle stall. I'm not sure why, but that's the way it is. And we would get it for late night when you've digested your dinner, you're starting to get hungry again and it's warm and comforting. Oh, it's so perfect. And as you saw, it was really easy. So if you can get a hold of pandan leaves, go ahead and give this recipe a try and I guarantee you, people are going to love it. And if you don't have access to pandan leaves, maybe in the future I'll show you a Thai tea version because we make that as well. So the recipe, as always, is on hotthaikitchen.com. When you make this, send me a photo and show me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And I will see you next time for your next delicious Thai meal.